Hey everyone, and welcome to our astonishing session regarding the importance of confidential computing in Web3 with our invited T Core expert, Rauf, and our chief product of our very own, I mean, Alex. Let's wait for Alex to connect, and I think we may start in just a couple of minutes. Hello, everyone. Hey, Rauf. Nice to see you here. Nice to see you too. Thank you for inviting. Just a minute more waiting for Alex to connect, and we definitely will start. Oh, I see Alex has already joined. Hey, Alex. Finally, nice to see you here. Hey, Alex. How are you doing? Hey, good, good. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, totally perfect. So, first of all, guys, I'm Alex, Chief Marketing of Super Protocol. You're a constant host here on our very own AMA sessions on Super Protocol Twitter Spaces. And we got today our chief product, Alex, as well, and Rauf, a uh, G-Core expert in confidential computing. So, guys, I think that uh, the best way to start our space is to tell us more about yourself. So let's start with it. And then we'll go to our most common, important, and interesting questions, which will help us delve deeper into understanding of confidential computing and its importance for the whole Web3. Yeah, sure. Let me uh, let me to the start. It's, uh, my name is Raul, and I'm a lead solution architect uh, in our G4 cloud solution. So I'm responsible for solutions for our customers to find a specific infrastructure solutions uh, and uh, meet all the requirements that our customer has. And also, uh, I would be proud to say a few things about our company. It's like, we are G4, we are international leader in public cloud, edge computing, content delivery, hosting, and the security solution. Uh, we have a headquarters in Luxembourg and have many offices in Germany, Poland, Lithuania, Cyprus, and Georgia. So we managed our own global IT infrastructure across six con continents, uh, be it one of the best network performance in Europe, North America, Asia, and Latin America. So we deliver an average worldwide response time of 20 or 20, 30 milliseconds, all through in several regions, speeds below 3, 5 milliseconds. Our network consists of 114 plus points of presence around the world uh, in reliable tier 3 and tier 4 data centers. Uh, the total capacity is more than 110 terabytes per second. So yeah, <laughs> that's a few words about that. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Rauf. And Alex, before you start with telling us a little bit more about Super Protocol and what we do, uh, including who are you as well, uh, I just want to remind everyone that this AMA session is not only an educational one. However, it's uh, one of the part of our mutual partner campaign on Galaxy and listening to this AMA session for at least 20 minutes will definitely grant you a, an NS uh, which we created on Galaxy to support and promote our mutual partnership. And of course, those NS uh, you will be able uh, to use to claim T tokens right after T. So listen carefully. Don't forget if you don't still aware of the campaign on Galaxy with G Core, just check it out. Check our uh, Twitter. There is a lot of information just uh, on the top. You will easily find the link and join this campaign as well. Uh, so you will definitely be eligible to claim the NFT after listening to this AMA. However, if you haven't still done other tasks, that are uh, still in this campaign, you will be able to do them as well. But this AMA is the core task, so uh, definitely really happy to see you, everyone here. So, Alex, let's go. Hey, everyone. <laughs> My name is Alex. I'm the Chief Product Officer for Protocol. Um, so, I guess I'm responsible for the product itself. My direct counterpart is our CTO, Andre. 
And uh, if you went to our previous AMO session, uh, he was he was there also to answer answer questions. And I'm responsible for the, the product for more the I guess the logic of it and um, the user uh, interfacing with it and uh, the protocol as part of more global business sphere of things. Yeah, so maybe Alex I can start with telling more about the protocol. Definitely you should. Okay. Well, um I don't know if many of what we do and what the company does and what the product is, so I'll just start from the beginning and I'll try to run through it real quick, uh to give you an intro. So Super is a decentralized confidential computing protocol for Web3. Now, what does that mean? Let's have to start with the problem statement. And the idea of Web3 is that it's to be um, completely decentralized, uncensored, independent. And most of it kind of is already. So the blockchain, smart contract, decentralized storages, which are not governed by any single authority, but rather by the community. But Web3 is not yet completely decentralized. So uh, there is a kind of like a big piece of a puzzle. Now, this piece is computing. And the problem with the currency is that it does not have its infrastructure. Uh, uh, by computing, I mean data in use, or applications, or moving parts, such as backends, and ability to form complex computations on data. Um, so you probably know the central DAPs uh, use smart contracts for their backends, but these are very limited in scope and what they can do and have poor performance because they're blockchain-based. Uh, now, in the web, in the world of with their cloud computing providers that handle the storage and the computing part, and there is monopoly. We'll consider that the top three major cloud providers are 85% of the market. You probably know who they are. The top 10 own, I believe, 85% or 90%. So it's a, it's a very tight circle. Uh, and they're all, all, and Web3, for that missing puzzle, it has to currently to rely on, on one of those providers for, uh, for its computing. So it's not yet Web3. It's more like Web2.5. And our mission is to fix this and to complete the decentralization of Web3, to make it Web3. Now, the protocol, protocol um, allows any machine that is equipped with confidential uh, computing chip to join the network and you know, perform any com computations, any types of computations, general computations. Um, and this way, decentralized applications could now have a real backend, and these applications and services could be accessible by the users from the internet. But now, the most defining of the protocol is confidentiality. It's um, well, confidentiality is the very core, the very foundation. Uh, this is our way of ensuring that Web3 is not only decentralized, but um, also confidential. And uh, I'll talk more about confidentiality uh, later questions. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Alex. Uh, and let's go for the, I think, a really important question here that we uh, gathered here, uh, Decor and Super Protocol. So, Alex. Uh, what's T-Core's role in your partner uh, in a partnership with Super Protocol? Well, um, it's a very key because uh, <laughs> G-Core um, provides the, the infrastructure for our protocol, especially for for testnet. Uh, G-Core plays a very uh, major role in helping us to launch testnet phase two, which will launch when was that? March? In March. And also, yep. also of course, we'll play large in launching of phase three, testnet phase three, which we think is coming in at the end of June, approximately. So they've been very good to us, <laughs> providing the uh, confidential computing m machines to to use in our uh, test test network. So, so if uh, if any of you here have been tested in uh, phase two, uh, those were the machines provided by G Corp, and we think they were. Very well. Yeah, we are also, uh, I mean, that we're providing the resources uh, in, and the main idea for our infrastructure that all the locations are fully independent from each other. So that means that we can provide global solution with different types of uh, resources. And also we work together to find out 
especially needs of the super protocol. We find out the modern approach to uh, confidential compute specific CPU models, and uh, together we are negotiating the uh, how it would size <laughs> in infrastructure way. So I mean that uh, we testing different uh, configuration, testing CPU models, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, and also not about the, only the that perspective. We're providing the bare metals with the, uh, all all of the stuff about the data protection, the SG technology in the future. We provided with the TDX from the Intel, uh, and also we're speaking about to find the solution in the virtual segments. I mean, that part of our cloud virtual machine and also some specific configuration uh, for ML AI solutions, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. Awesome. Really interesting. So, the following question, I believe that most of our listeners are here to know the answer. So, how does credentials relate to the three and why is this important, Alex? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Um, we believe that confidentiality is the key to building a decentralized computing uh, network infrastructure. Uh, and it's about the issue of trust. It's the same issue that is uh, being solved by blockchain. So in the network, that there are all these machines, right, that provide computer resources. Uh, that are, they can own the machine or they could be rented from... Uh, providers uh, such as G Core, for instance, right? Uh, but in, on all these machines, you are hosting your application databases, backend microservices, services, web servers, <laughs> whatever. You can run uh, Python or intelligence, do data analytics, anything, right? And all of this is a set sensor, the data itself and you, the, the, the application you run. Now, how can you ensure that the owners or renters of uh, these, these machines won't be able to touch your data or steal it, hack it in your code, right? Um, <clears throat> because uh, this, uh, our protocol is not based on paper contracts like you know, major computing providers. It's based on based on algorithms, uh, on smart contract statements. So in our framework, anyone can provide their resources as long as they meet the requirements. And they can do this anonymous. So you want to, and it, it works almost right you um, choose a configuration you place an order and then a machine is provided uh, for you that uh, fits your requirements the price range is right now the question is can you trust that oh maybe maybe you but maybe maybe you can't <laughs> the point is that we don't know and so in the super protocol we have to assume that every machine on the network is untrusted by default we have to assume and the way your uh, application and data are protected on any machine is through confidential computing um, now, confidential computing ensures that uh, no third party, not even the owner of the machine or the, 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 the provider of the machine, can access or even have any knowledge as to what is happening inside a so-called TE. It's a trusted execution environment, also known as an enclave, which is uh, it's basically um, a black box, invincible, invincible and invisible to the uh, outside to the outside world. So. Yes, yeah, so uh, we think that confidential computing is paramount in establishing the, in uh, not establishing trust, but resolving the trust for web three. Awesome, and I think that it's time to explain what confidential computing is, in maybe simple words, and how it works. Rove. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's start from the very beginning and basic things. We all know that the uh, they have to make the protect, make the, I mean, that basic things to protect our data, uh, and they start to, with the protection at rest, it means that it's encryption data in disks. Uh, we also know about that this is the data protection flight mechanism. It's about the protecting data while it's transferring between machines. Uh, but both mechanisms don't help you if you are processing it, right? Because if you're processing the data, even if it's encrypted in a disk, even if it's encrypted in a network, it will be decrypted in the main memory. It means that all people or software that have access somehow to the main memory will have access to the sensitive data. 
So this should be the baseline protection you have, but it's not sufficient. And there was the confidential computing comes in because it's at the data protection in use. So what about the data protection in use? Uh, it's what we're talking about with the Alexander. It's encryption of the data while it's used. So the data is encrypted in the main memory. All the data that belongs to the SGX example, it's about the enclave. So all the data that belongs to the VM, in, uh, also the all data that belongs to the VM in PDX is encrypted on the main memory. On the bus to the CPU, it gets only decrypted only uh, inside the CPU edit. So you make sure to still do have access control. So that means that enclave uh, in SGX case to uh, you will have access only with data. I mean that inside the virtual machine, only applications will have access to the specific enclaves in the space uh, where you can run your code. And in case of the KDX, only VM, uh, which, which belongs to this uh, uh, infrastructure, should have access and nothing else. That means that everything outside of the trust boundary should not have access to the data. So that means that if you are combining data protection use, data protection flight and data protection at rest, then only then you can do really end-to-end -end security and trust. So that, that's the main idea. Awesome. That's really interesting. And Alex, uh, maybe you would love to share something more on this. Or we can go for the next question, actually, uh, that will shed more, a lot more light on what we are talking here. So. How does confidential computing differ from other measures such as encryption or access control? So yeah, again, uh, we know that other measures is about data protection threats. That means that uh, uh, it's uh, I need to secure inactive data stored on any device or network. So while data at rest is sometimes considered to be less vulnerable than the data in transit, uh, uh, attackers often find data at rest are more vulnerable targets than the data in motion. So the data, second thing that data in motion also referred as a data in flight, it means that you are protecting your data uh, while it's transported between locations, either with, between the computer system, between the VM, et cetera, et cetera. So it's about VPNs, it's about firewalling or something like that. But if we're talking about the confidential computer me measures, it means like <laughs> we can add uh, the things like trust boundaries. It's elements with the potential to access confidential data. So you can imagine like we have a cloud stack and cloud engine, then we have a BIOS and firmware, then we have a host OS and hypervisors, then we have a VM guest admin, uh, guest OS, applications, and confidential data. So if we're talking about the ethics, is the, I mean that uh, in that in, in those, those uh, boundaries, uh, only applications or part of an application could have access to confidential data. If we're talking about the new technology that Intel provides, the TDX. Uh, that means that VM guest admin, guest OS application, and has access to confidential data. So that means that cloud stack, BIOS, firmware, host OS, and hypervisors don't have access. So here we find out that uh, two different options how you should make the confidential computer. You use TDX that comes in the new generation, fourth generation of Intel CPU, and as is what we have right now. So uh, it's about deployment simplicity. So we have a full memory encryption. It's easy. After that, in the middle between SGX and full memory encryption is TEDx. When uh, it, uh, when you are have isolation of your virtual machine and only your virtual machine and all the users inside this virtual machine and all the applications, it could be one application inside VM could have access uh, to the confidential data. TEDx is good that because you don't need to do nothing with your infrastructure, with your application, with your code. So you can easily use type of the virtual machine, the trusted domain. That means that all, all virtual machines are encrypted and data inside it. And the most <laughs> hardest one is the SG. 
It means that it's part inside of your VM or physical server with the, I, I mean, that with the enclave and only specific applications or part of the application has the access to the, to this part of the information. So that's why in the SDX case, you should modify your application to work with the SDX. In case of the TDX, it's more simple. So you shouldn't do nothing for that. But it's less secure, of course. Cool. Uh, pretty sophisticated. However, I believe that uh, most of our list just touch the base and get a little bit of understanding of what's confidential hidden is and how it's different. Uh, so the most logical uh, question will be the following, since we have heard some real innovations here. What's the trend in the cloud services market? Where we are going, though? Yeah, in general, I can say that we're going to the fully awesome uh, infrastructure. So as far as we, uh, as we saw that in the big three cloud providers and also as us, it's the platform as a service that automates you to run specific, I mean that you don't need to maintain your infrastructure, you just use it. For example, manage databases, manage Kubernetes as a service, et cetera, et cetera. So it's services when you don't need to spawn any resources, you just, I mean that you're just starting to use that starting to use databases, starting to use the Kubernetes, et cetera, et cetera. So you don't need to update them. You don't need to, I mean, that uh, to, to make any copies of your data, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, in our future trends, uh, it, it can become as a serverless solution. It means that you even don't need to, I mean, that specify your infrastructure request. It will, will be automatically out of scaling depends on your load. So you just put your code inside the infrastructure and it runs. And you don't care about uh, its redundancy or something like that, just auto scales of your load. And probably in, in the future, you'll see that zero code solution when you can build your application just predefined blocks or something like that. That, that means that uh, you can, I mean that you will forget about the maintenance of the infrastructure. It will be fully automated. Uh, it will be fully automated from the architectural perspective. So your application, database, all the things we managed by the by the servers. Uh, I, I, I mean that by the ISP. Uh, so you will just place your application, place your code, and that's all. That's our trend to be true. And also the with the became more simple, simplifying uh, with the conservational computing. You see that the TDX is up here. That means that you don't need any more to modify your code, modify your application. You can just run it inside the virtual machine. It also could help you to make these measures to protect your data. So in general, for example, we, we do more from our product perspective. And now, for example, we launched managed Kubernetes. So that means that uh, it's no extra cost. You just pay for resources that you use, and you don't need to, I mean, that to have access to the control plane of the Kubernetes, for example. You just working with your working nodes and place your application. That's all. All the things about updating your cluster, make it running, et cetera, et cetera, is on our side. So you don't need to maintain these clusters. So it's under our SLA, for example. Yeah, it's it's in general. All right, cool. So as far as I can see, we are moving into some hassle-free, pretty to use future in terms of cloud service. And actually, that means that there are definitely should be some benefits which confidential computing offer for Web3 applications and infrastructure, right, Alex? Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I mean, it's uh, general computing, so you can really do anything you want with it. Um, specifically for a super protocol, I think off the top of my head, there are three kind of like main scenarios of use. Uh, so the first one uh, is confidential uh, public hosting. Now, we, we launched this, this capability in uh, testnet phase two in March. And uh, basically, it enables the um, uh, access of users from the internet to the applications and uh, data running in the confidential 
in the environment. So, uh, so um, we use the tunneling, tunneling network pro protocol. So basically, you can have a dynamic web application running in the enclave, in a trusted execution environment, or any type of application with the backends, web servers, and everything. And the users can access your app the regular uh, domain. So it would, it would work just like a Web2 application. Um, second, general on, on data. This is, uh, we launched that in phase one back in September of last year. That was our, our first. Uh, capability. So, for instance, if you need um, uh, to work a Python script or something over sensitive data, or maybe even not your data, but third party that is not yours, even more likely case for confidentiality. Maybe some uh, advanced analytics. Maybe you want to train artificial intelligence. So, basically, any any computing cases. And the third is um, off-chain computing for Web3 apps. So, for instance, you have, um, as a developer, you have decentralized application that, it, that you have already running on a blockchain smart contract, your DAP. So your, your, your database is decentralized, front end, on a decentralized storage or something. Uh, but uh, maybe you have a need to microsense that is uh, too complex for what a smart contract uh, can do, and you need more serious and uh, confidential computing powers and deploy this microservice on um, uh, a a machine or protocol network and um, work it into your overall architecture. Yeah. Uh, well, th this is not a complex scenario, of course, and I'm sure uh, that the developers and data scientists or other users will find new and innovative ways of using of using the the protocol. But so far, that's that that's what I can see. Definitely, they will, since actually one of our main missions here is to bring the computational power back to the community. And with this mission, we will definitely help people to explore more interesting and innovative applications of what we are talking here about. So, Alex, and how does Super Protocol integrate confidential computing into its products and services? Okay, well, I mean, um, everything about Super Protocol is based on confidential computing, of course. That's the you know, the foundation. Everything is uh, confidential. We, we, we don't have much confidential by default. Uh, but aside from the protocol itself, which is a product service, uh, our flagship product is the marketplace. Now, the, the idea of the marketplace is that anyone can provide uh, confidential computing resources, as I have uh, discussed earlier, but also application data. So if you're a developer, you can place um, offers your application on blockchain, uh, it will be reflected in the marketplace. It's like this user-friendly UI. Uh, and uh, data providers which offer data sets, even the, if they're sensitive. And those are ready made up, and they, they may be purchased by the client. So it's, um, it's a marketplace. It, that in itself is not the in innovation. There are many marketplaces for you know, applications and for data. What is innovative is confidentiality, because this is also about solving the threat. For instance, if a data provider has sensitive data on offer, they don't have to worry that someone will steal uh, their data. Because through, through the marketplace or through the protocol itself, all the computations are performed in a um, confidential uh, environment, the trusted execution environment, and where no third parties have access. So it's uh, it's a very user friendly for the clients. You can easily click and choose uh, the solution and the data that you want, and you can combine them. Well, like a Python script, one provider has developed a Python script for Python script for analysis. I don't know, like faces and images or something. And the data provider uh, has the sets of uh, a thousand images, and you can maybe train the script or something. Um, and just uh, you, and, and then uh, would we'll pick uh, a confidential computing machine to do the the actual cal calculations uh, in just a few clicks and then a few minutes, and you have your your result. So the market is a place where you can um, offer your products and your services, and as a client, you can purchase them. And as a provider, you can be confident that uh, your products. By this, I mean applications and data that will not be uh, modified or stolen. And after the computations are done, then Clay, it shuts down and everything is destroyed. So you only get the results, nothing else 
remains. Uh, and another product that we're developing with Testnet Phase 3 is a confidential chat, <laughs> uh, a chat room. Uh, well, at this point, it's like more of concept uh, demo to illustrate the capabilities of Super Protocol in terms of hosting a dynamic, fully dynamic web application uh, confidential in environment. Because um, I think we were the first ones to combine the uh, confidential computing with the tunnels, the tunneling network protocol to allow uh, users from the internet to have access to um, applications in a confidential en en environment. But in um, Testnet Space to launch just um, was like a simple static web page uh, to, to illustrate the capabilities. And now we're going to uh, show how an actual dynamic application. So, um, we're building it on uh, Next.js. And everything about it is encrypted, and the only person or persons who have the private key to the chat can access the conversation. And nobody else, not no third party, nobody, not even the protocol team, can have access or any visibility into this. So that this is uh, completely confidential. Uh, and well, we're also working on other products. I think it's too early to talk about them in public. Well, that was pretty groundbreaking, and. Actually, Alex, I think most of our listeners will be definitely interested to hear maybe some real world, world use cases for confidential computing in that three specific. Um, sure. I mean, well, I mean, uh, use cases, use cases can be any, right? Because it's basically general computing. So whatever you put in the, in the black box, <laughs> that, that, that's what's going to work. Uh, but in terms of uh, areas of, of use, um, uh, we have, we have a few, but I'll just name the top three. Uh, the blockchain smart contracts are transparent. The records in the ledger are open, uh, to anyone to see. But, so these are the cases we have, have the most need for privacy and confidentiality. Uh, first case, big data. Uh, the team have had a lot of previous experience working with the big data, specifically with decentralized confidential computing. And our clients, major, major enterprises, uh, companies, and, and the, 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 their problem is always of trust. So how can uh, major companies that have highly sensitive data, and I mean like major banks, uh, major retail chains, uh, telecom service for dozens of millions of uh, users, so they have all of this data, like whatever you buy into the database, you know, data science make all different deductions about it on who you are, and, <laughs> uh, like, uh, give you some attributes, are you married, are you how old, what are your preferences, uh, to, to, to make it easier to sell to So the, 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 this is val valuable data, and uh, each of those, not only different companies, but different types of companies. So banks have one, one type of data, retail chains for uh, purchases, Telecoms have your uh, locations, and web searches, and such. Uh, and it's interesting for them to uh, cooperate with very sensitive data to um, enrich uh, each other's analytics. But because the data is so sensitive, they're very, very protective about it. So they, they, uh, they would not allow it to leave their company ground infrastructure. So how can they cooperate if there, there's no middle ground, no trust? So, uh, it was a few years ago. So, uh, so the solution we found wasn't just decentralized confidential computing, uh, on, 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 on private, on private, but still. And, uh, uh, since it's decentralized and conf confidential, the company to work with us. Um, yeah, so the, the, the confidentiality made sure that the data, the sensitive data would go into the enclave, but it would not go out. Only uh, anonymized go out. And uh, Super Protocol will fully support uh, this, this use case, of course. Now, the second is uh, decentralized identity. We think it's going to be a very big thing for Web3, not only Web3, uh, where the users will be the owners of their identification and can choose where and how to give access to their uh, data of all sorts. Now, of course, this, this identification will have to uh, feed in very sensitive information from multiple sources, and the case for confidentiality is strong here. Now, the, those, those sources, including uh, sources from traditional institutions, such as, I don't know, banks, insurance companies, government, 
education, whatever, anything, uh, and so on. So they, 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 they will be within the uh, confidential environment. Um, the results would be written into the user's uh, identity about well, it's 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 it's, it's very general, it's general direction. And uh, finally, the third one, the huge elephant in the room, <laughs> is artificial intelligence. Now, there are many, many courses. Uh, the training of the AI itself, of course, it can be data from the Wikipedia, but it can also be very sensitive, right? And the the better uh, for artificial intelligence to become significantly better and smarter than it is now, it will have to use sensitive. Of course, it will be increasingly sensitive, and there will be increasingly, increasingly large amounts of. Uh, but also the human interaction with the AI itself. So we believe that in the near future, AI will be everywhere. And I don't know. I don't know. Maybe each one will have like a personal AI system that is learning from us, and it's adapted to our personalities. And maybe it is our person in a way. And of course, uh, everything about this uh, highly sensitive. It's also a very strong case for confidentiality, but um, and for de decentralization as well, because uh, I have a feeling that there is also increasingly strong demand for AI uh, that is, what I say, neutral, maybe neutral, objective, or whatever, in its in its view in its view of the world. And uh, for it to be neutral and objective, it means that it would have to be running on a neutral and objective <laughs> decentralized infrastructure. Uh, oh, confidential, of course. So th this is, um, and that is a call uh, doing. Yeah, that's a bright future you're painting here, Alex. But how about the potential risks and challenges it faces with confidential computing in Web3? I can add that from the infrastructure perspective. Uh, you know that if you use ethics, uh, confidential computing technology, it means that you are Less flexibility, you need to update your code to work with that, to the enclave. And also you are stuck in the, uh, I mean that in several hosts or in uh, dedicated servers, or et cetera. So that means that you can't easily uh, make redundancy copies of data or something like that to the nearest host because the keys are unique. And that means that it could be risk from any outages. Uh, from the infrastructure perspective, because as far as I know, any of cloud providers have this problem. Of course, we fix that, we updated the infrastructure, uh, we changed the servers, we have a spare part, et cetera, et cetera, but with the confidential resources, it's not that easy. So also with the virtual environment, we're talking about the TDX, it's more simple because you're not stuck to a specific host and it could be migrated to the second host with a TEDx enabled on it. So it helps to migrate your data uh, in, I mean that, in, in near host. That, that's the one of the point. Well, uh, from from my side, I can say that, of course, there are uh, technical risks, confidential computing, and they are being mitigated by Intel and uh, other developers. Of the of the chipsets, but uh, we from uh, the uh, protocol side, we are also adding um, a layer a layer of protection. We call it a consensus mechanism uh, uh, that also adds additional uh, security uh, uh, checks, decentralized security checks on on top on uh, on top of the hardware. And uh, as, as far as, uh, but in terms of, uh, I think for decentralized infrastructure, so it's like kind of like a double-edged sword in a way, because, um, for instance, the risk of outages less because uh, there are many, many different nodes to stick, uh, just like in blockchain. So each each confidential machine, like a node, for instance. Uh, uh, because it's not centralized in a single authority like the centralized provider. Uh, but the challenge is that confidential, well, to build this network, you would need a lot of uh, machines, confidential computing chips, and there is a very high demand for them, which uh, we think is a good thing <laughs> because that means we are doing something right. So the the demand is very high for the machines, and again, we thank G Core for uh, giving us the opportunity to 
to work with 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 their confidential uh, computing machines and for the flexibility to customize them, our requirements to test them. And but uh, I just challenge mitigated because uh, I, I I believe that we we believe that confidential computing is the the future and it is proven by uh, how many new projects are appearing all, all the time that are based on confidential computing. Not only decentralized, not, not only well, web too as well. So the, the world, the trend the move, is, is moving toward confidentiality and maybe in uh, not far future, all the computers or the majority of computers will, will, will come by default. Even even like a user computer, not a service, but notebook, will, will, will come equipped with uh, confidentiality uh, chipsets. So I, I think that's the trend, and uh, that in that case, any shortage of uh, supply is just temporary. All right, cool. Uh, and also, of course, I would love to thank Jikor as well. So, Rauf, I believe that uh, most of our listeners would definitely be happy to hear how exactly Jikor's cloud infrastructure supports confidential super protocol and other clients. Yeah, what are what are the main difference us from the other, I mean, the cloud providers that we are more flexible and we work precisely with the, any customer request. We working together with the customer to optimize the infrastructure, not only for the load perspective, also with the price perspective, of course. Uh, we are offering the, I mean, that uh, main location around the globe. Uh, today we can offer 23 plus location and we are growing. Uh, so we can offer the infrastructure in needed location and also it could be on premises. Some stuff we also do that. Uh, we can offer not only virtual machines with SG, we can offer the bare metal with the specific that fits the customer needs. So that's why we are also ordering a specific spare part, uh, spare hot. So for the customer, if any outages can can be there because we really uh, care about the su- success of the customer. So, so this is the basic thing. And also, we're working with new technology. Uh, we are a part. We have a partnership with the Intel, and we are waiting for the next generation CPUs so we can offer. Um, I mean, that up to date, most uh, modern one infrastructure based on the new CPUs, new technology that the SDX in it, it, it came with the TDX. Uh, yeah, so we have a we have a, in our portfolio many of additional services like access controls, so like uh, I, I mean that additional services as Kubernetes, so you can run confidential computing uh, using the man's Kubernetes. Not only for virtual machines, we also supported the bare metal one. Uh, yeah, there's there no additional fees for that. Uh, yeah, these are the main things. And we provided also the GPU instances for customer needs for MLAI uh, infrastructure. Also, we have a solution with IP. Uh, it's uh, state-of-the-art technology. Speed up uh, all the, I mean, the uh, training of the models uh, to interferences and all the stuff. Yeah, that's really cool. And by the way, I would like to remind everyone that uh, we have uh, launched our mutual partnership campaign on Galaxy, where each of you can join and claim cool NFTs, which you will be able to uh, exchange for T tokens right after G, according to our uh, bounty program model. So join this campaign. I've shared the tweet right in ahead of this AMA session. So uh, there are pretty easy tasks, and uh, actually in the pro campaign there is a task test some G core services as well, uh, and of course to be rewarded uh, currently with NFTs and later with T tokens, our native super protocol uh, infrastructure token. Uh, so it it should definitely be interesting for many of you so try it out if you would love to delve DG core service and get astonishing uh, sorry yeah so just try it on and uh, you will be definitely rewarded so Alex uh, the next question is for you uh, since we are talking a lot about the future and uh, definitely we should uh, understand a little bit on how do you see the future of Web3 and confidential computing evolving in the next few years? Okay. 
Well, I mean, I'll lay in uh, broad terms, not, not technical terms. Uh, but the, the way I see the Web3 is currently uh, infancy stage. I mean, we're, we're really just getting started. And we are here at the very beginning, and this is uh, the time to make a stake for the future. You know, after a big innovation that appeared in the last 15, 20 years, I used to think that maybe it was a bit naive that, uh, oh, you know, this is it. This is uh, <laughs> everything has been done now. Uh, uh, there's really nothing else uh, major breakthrough to do. Just right until another, the big next thing would come along like in a year or so. Like, okay, well, yeah, this is it now. <laughs> but with Web3, you know, it's like um, whole. It's like a whole new unexplored frontier, you know, that is like full of opportunities. It's not just one thing. It's many, many different. It, it's like a wild west. And uh, we, we wanted fundamental um, uh, founding part of it. Now, at the uh, Super Protocol, we believe that the future is in confidentiality. And then, uh, well, as I said, within a span of a few years, and all the machines, confidentiality built in and it will be the new de facto standard. Uh, I think confidentiality is a requirement for Web3 to come accepted and to go mainstream because in the traditional web institutions there are many concerns about the lack of privacy and security in Web3 to chaotic and transparent <laughs> and, uh, and unless unless the trust and privacy result Web3 would um, would remain like this curious niche uh, crypto enthusiast. But, but we do believe that with the protocol, um, the protocol can do its part to help Web3 grow from its infancy and into adulthood and become an integral, integral and yet independent part of the interest. So I think uh, the future is now. <laughs> yeah, awesome. And uh, I think that it's uh, pretty overall about the future, but how mm -hmm. Do you envision Super Protocol and Secor continuing to work together in the future? So I can say that from our perspective, the customer success is our success. So we'll try to find a more different configuration of the full bar metal servers with the uh, confidential computing inside it. Uh, will provide many configurations for your marketplace and also not only the physical one, but the virtual machines also with potential part inside it. So, yeah, we will expand that. We will make more stock for you, for your users also, and for your market. So, we will continue to work together to define the, uh, I mean, the most performance and from the price perspective, optimized configuration for you. Then we will try to, I mean, that provide a modern solution, modern CP, modern equipment. Yeah, with the good support of that. <laughs> yes, thank you. I, I, I agree. Uh, that the plan is to continue this uh, partnership and we'll uh, figure out uh, like some default um, configuration. So but basically we wanted to make it easy for people to become uh, confidential uh, providers of confidential computing resources. So even if you don't have a server with confidential computing, you would uh, go to G Core and they would have uh, like you know preset machines with preset configurations that are already that are easily com compatible with the super protocol. So it would be like uh, this kind of plug and play, <laughs> plug and play. So I think that's um, that's where we want to go. Yeah, awesome. I believe that we definitely will. So I think it's time to wrap it up uh, since we have covered a lot of really interesting and valuable information for our community and for our newcomers as well. Uh, so thank you so much, guys, for joining this space, uh, for shedding a lot, lots of light on complicated. I think now it's not. So, since you have really explained a lot of things so well, so thank you so much, Raouf, for joining for our partnership, of course. And thank you, Alex, for those really rich answers uh, that we received. And uh, cheers, guys. Uh, I definitely believe that uh, I'll see you again in a couple of months when we break through some cool milestones in terms of innovation and uh, maybe closer to mainnet, but we definitely will. 
So thank you so much. Maybe some final words to our listeners, and we will wrap it up. Thank you, guys. Thank you for listening. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for your time. See you. Yeah, bye, guys. Cheers. And we all gonna make it. Like me. <laughs>